I just want to laugh more. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm fed yeah. up with drama. Especially at my age when yeah. you know the end is nearer than the beginning. So Can I say going, something? I just want to laugh. Off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before I'd, I'd be like, what limb do I have to take, cut off to make this scene 3% better? And when, when I signed that nine picture deal to do the Nick Fury, it's like, yeah. how long I gotta stay alive to do nine pictures? <laughs> <laughs> so when I first started playing Loki, I was like, okay, he's a son. I know what that is. He's a brother. I know what that is. You find your own way through it. Welcome to the Hollywood Reporter Roundtables. I'm really excited about the group of actors we have today. We're going to talk about your careers, these projects, and, and a whole lot else so we can get started. All right, we're going to start easy. When a fan comes up to you on the street, what's he likely to recognize you from or she? And what does he or she often say? Well, on the way over here, it was funny. I was sitting on the seat in the plane, and I just felt a little like a letter fall on my seat. And then someone walked away and I looked at it and it was in this like blue highlighter with uh -huh. the little moon on it. So for the wow. Moon Knight show that I just oh. done. And it was just like, I, I, you know, I, my mother would have disowned me if I didn't say something. Oh, oh what did you I know? say? And it was like, uh, you know, as a person of color, oh. how much it means to me that you're out there doing these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. It was really, really sweet. Yeah. 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 What a nice thing, though, for somebody to lay that on really you. Sweet. Yeah. Have you ever done that? That's I've nice. actually yeah. done that. I drop, if I see somebody, I'll like... Say, I'll slide them, then I'll get out of the way. You know, if you see somebody do something great, you just tell them. Yeah. I think it was Maggie Gyllenhaal was the last one. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. that. Well, I'll say this, and I don't know, Quincy and Oscar, how you guys feel, but sitting with you three gents, like, I grew up watching you, so it's an honor to be at the same time. Oh, thanks. Man. I grew Truly. up watching <laughs> 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 I haven't grown yeah. up yet. So. It's easy to do. <laughs> yeah. I do way too much. <laughs> my my uh, thing is that uh, people ask me to tell them to fuck off all the time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but does that get awkward? Well, you know, it's not the easiest thing to say to no. people. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so easy when people say, could you, would you, I mean, it started when I was, I was playing LBJ and uh, I came up one night and there was this young couple, you know, very nice, very sweet, about 17 and a boyfriend and they had a video and they said, could you could you tell us to fuck off, please? <laughs> and I said, fuck off. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. But, but the worst the worst I had yeah. was here yeah. in LA when I went to a, a meeting of um, Ronan Farrow. Uh -huh. And he was it was a Me Too thing. And he was yeah. lost, launching the book. And all these Hollywood women uh -huh. were there and they were watching. It was very intense. And I came in late and I was it was organized by Rosanna Arquette and I was standing at the back, you know, and what and it was it was a really yeah. good thing and big round of applause. And then they all turned around and they saw me and they took the camera and said, Can you tell us to fuck off? Oh my god. And I said, This is a me too meeting. <laughs> is this really proper to be asking me oh to tell god. you to yeah. fuck off in a yeah. me too meeting? And then does that mean then I get cancelled? You're correct. You know, yeah, that's right. the next step. Yeah, it's a yeah. setup. I remember um, you saying it to me, but it wasn't that pleasant. No, <laughs> I was younger then. <laughs> what do you get, Sam? It used to be, what do they call a quarter panel with cheese and friends, but uh, generations mm -hmm. changed. I thought you, you were also going to have a curse word that, that I will not. No, people ask me to call them up like all the time. Got it, yeah. That's, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's what I figured. Or they'll ask me to put it on their, you know, answering machine. They'll yeah, yeah, literally yeah, yeah, yeah. said, you know, would you do my, you know, answering machine? And they go, what? This, is, this motherfucker's not home right now. <laughs> <laughs> call that, and the motherfucker will call you back. Like, oh, my God! <laughs> you know you can charge them. I was just thinking. Yeah, you can make money out of it. You know? Yeah. I don't want to gouge the public. Yeah. I charge them enough to come to my movies. Yeah. Because you could say that's fifty dollars, motherfucker. Yeah. Is, is that, <laughs> like, huh? right, here's a, well, people that want to make videos just said, you know, I, I, I will, you know, take a photo with you, take a yeah. selfie. I get paid to make movies, so we're not making videos. Really? Mm. Yeah. Draws the line. I love it. I love it. All right, Quincy, this is the very first thing that, that you have done. You're all of a sudden playing Magic Johnson. Yeah. It's an HBO series. It's Adam McKay. I've heard you say that going in production, you had to sort of get your, your head straight. I'm going to quote yeah. you here. Started going to therapy and really just bracing myself for what was about to come my way. Uh, now I'm ready for it. Which sounds like someone gave you a 
great piece of advice. But I'm curious sort of what, what that entailed and, and how do you prepare yourself? And then I'm going to open up to sort of the rest of you because you've all been in his shoes. How do you prepare yourself? Yeah, I think it's just, um, I knew, you know, being on the HBO, Adam McKay, all of that, uh, and playing Magic, you know, it it should be a fun show and people, a lot of people going to be watching it. So I just, um, I don't know. I just knew that it was going to be a lot of eyeballs on me. So it's like, you know, get everything out now and then uh -huh. come back uh, and just be smart about like the way you gonna move uh, the through the world. Yeah, that's like, very smart. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like and just like understand that people are gonna be coming up to you. How is that gonna make you feel? Like, are you gonna be comfortable with that? Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't want to. You went to like, therapy for that? Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> really? That's very mindful, man. That's a very yeah. mindful that was, yeah. That's some, I mean, Well, I didn't even know that kind of shit was available. Did you? Yeah. You know, when, when it happened. It just happens. Such a smart idea, though. Did somebody tell you to do that? Or no. Good for like, you, man. Just, I, um, I love acting. I love to do the work. But, like, I didn't, I didn't want to have people coming up. Yeah, yeah, me, yeah. But, like, I started understanding that it's, like, part of the gig. And, like, also just... It's fun, like people are excited about your work. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like, it's cool. So, yeah. uh, just tried to flip my mindset of it. Good for you. So, so have you separated yeah. the them liking you or them yeah. liking your work? Good question. Have and, you separated that? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think even with all these meetings and stuff, I just know that it's I'm there because of the work that I've done. It's not they don't know me like everybody. They love you. We love. You. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. They don't know me. You, yeah. You know, but ordinary like, people do though. Uh, yeah. The mean? girls are looking at you on social media. It's oh. like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about your work. <laughs> well, they like the perception. It's a different, yeah, you know, it's a different head. I didn't think about that because when things kind of happen, or I did enough things, or some things like being in Spike Lee movies, mm -hmm. put me in another kind of world mm -hmm. in the summers. You know, after that happened, but there were always people. I never had the lead in those Spike Lee movies, so it didn't matter. So I didn't know if people knew me or not. Because I could be with Bill Nunn, who was Radio Raheem, and yeah. Giancarlo, who was bugging out. And people would be flipping over him, and I'd just be standing there, and they had no idea who yeah. it was. Yeah. You know, it was one of those kind of things. But so, do you remember when, I mean, for, for all of you, do you remember going from, you know, nobody knows who I am, there's anonymity, to all of a sudden I am a recognizable person. Like, usually it's a project that sort of changes that for you and were you in the way that Quincy's talking about it to sort of prepare for it? For me it was all the answers to every question so far is Loki. Uh -huh. that's, uh -huh. what, that's what people come up to me in the street and say um, and absolutely that was the thing that, that changed. What did they say? Oh, there was a hilarious one. I was, I was walking the dog one wet Wednesday in, in, uh, in a park in London. The summer after Infinity War came out, the spring. And a group of school kids were playing nearby on a break, and um, there was sort of heads turning. I thought, okay, well, you know, they've seen the movie. <laughs> and um, and then as they were walking away, I just I heard this uh, this shout. I was walking up the hill. I heard this shout. I was like, Loki. I was like, Yep, hi, <laughs> that's me. Um, Are you really dead? <laughs> and I was like. What an extraordinary yeah. existential uh -huh. question to be asked on a Wednesday morning. Like, yeah. am I really dead? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not right now. Yeah. Um, Happened but, before. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if the kid never even saw the movie? He was literally asking, asking me that. Question. When you think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. good. Yeah. Wait, so how do you respond? I said, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I was just like, nice to see you. <laughs> Have a good day. Because, you know, don't want to give out the Marvel it, spoilers. Um, Turns out Loki wasn't really dead Not, or no. in another timeline. No. But, but uh, yeah, in answer to that question, I think it was Loki that kind of, and I don't know how you feel, Quincy, but it's strange that moment when you're doing the thing that you always do in your life, you know, yeah. going to grab a coffee or going to get groceries. And, yeah. and you're like, oh, I didn't. And then somebody comes up to you or you're like, oh, right. I'm just doing a really ordinary thing today. I didn't and see they, that coming. And they know? look at you like, like, it's like different. It's like yeah, yeah. you doing the same thing. It's literally somebody right next you know, to me like, doing the you, same thing. You grocery shop? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. But the internet changed all that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because you know, I remember that, that the incidences I was talking about was pre internet. Sure. So, I mean, when I was at the, you know, when I was doing Die Hard or something, you know, I would actually walk around 
see how many people would recognize me. <laughs> just like for sport? Like actually to... Yeah. Did you have a shot the yeah, temperature? Exactly. No, I didn't. I didn't. You know, I just, you know, I just walk around. I stand on the corner in New York, you know. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, so what was what were the, the, the projects for, for you guys where... I'm so interested to hear what you guys say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, where, where you felt your whole world kind of change. I think just with, I mean, I valued my anonymity. Yeah. Mm. And I, you know, because people would say, were you, and you go, no. <laughs> uh, were you, in, no. I mean, I used to get confused with Albert Finney. I, I loved the fact that people didn't know who I was. And they said, oh, you're, and I said, well, maybe. And then they would see things, and I, they would, you know, some people would recognize uh -huh. it. But since I've been playing this role, Exactly. It's been impossible, and I and it's hard. It's not easy because if you know, I've been in this business for Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've been in this business since 1961. Yeah. So that's a long since time. Jesus Christ. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> so was Jesus Christ. He's in the business for a long time as well. <laughs> so I mean, so it's very hard, you know, when yeah. you you've prized yourself on being, you know, dodging and weaving and bobbing and weaving yeah. and with the profession, and suddenly you come up with a role like I'm playing at the moment, and you go, well. There's no going back. No. This is it. You know, you you sort of paid the dues, and now you're paying more dues. Yep. You know? Buckle up. Yeah, buckle up. So, would you have an incident though? I mean, where well things happen, like Michael. I mean, I've known Michael. You know, in my mind, I've known Michael forever. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, because I've been watching his career forever before I was even this person. Yep. That could say, hey, Mike, how you doing? Blah, yep. blah, blah. I felt like I knew him because we knew his character. Uh -huh. But he's also been this person that doesn't get stuck in that character. Yep. You know, you know mm. We can go from Beetlejuice to, to something yeah. else to something else to something else. And he's very different, but he's still, he's Michael Keaton, this actor that's this guy who does these great, very great characters. You know, But some people get stuck in a thing yeah. and they can't break that because they didn't let themselves break it. But you fought really hard to break. I mean, you really yeah. pushed to break that. You turned down things to break that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, it was a, yeah, yes. Thanks, by mm -hmm. the way. And you but, also, you went reclusive for a while. Then. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I, I'm a cake and eat it, guy, and eat it too guy. Like, I, w I want it all. I want to have my own life and, you know, and just live a normal life. But then, you know, I want to work. And yep. so everything that, you know, everyone was saying, that's just what comes with it. In terms of the opportunities to play everything, yeah, I, cr I created it. I did, but, and I'm proud of the fact that I wrote it out and not only said no to things, I kind of thought, how am I going to do this, you know? But I set it up early on that I could possibly have the opportunity to play different things. And had I not, had somebody said, you know what, not for nothing, we really don't care what else you want to play, we want you to be that guy, I probably would have done that and, you know, you know, make a living. And I don't think I'd been very happy. Oscar, I've heard you talk a little bit about, you know, now you're at a place where you do have to say no. You, you can't do everything that's, that's coming your way. Presumably you remember a, a time when, when that wasn't the case. And I've heard you say it's almost harder to say no and more stressful to say no than it was to wait for those yeses for all those years. Can you speak to that? Like, why? How so? Yeah, it's like my therapy sessions were more about, <laughs> you know, it's like how do I get off the, the fix of work, uh -huh. the, the constant, um, you know, it's connected with approval and uh -huh. wanting to be included and, and also the, the, the biggest window of my life as an actor has been wanting to get opportunities, yeah. wanting someone to say yes, and it's been a very small window of mm. b being able to say no, having yeah. the luxury to say no, so it takes like building those synapses to be able to like chemically be able to say no in yeah. my brain and not feel like I'm destroying my life in some way, you know? Yeah. And I've got young kids and this is the first time in 20 years I've taken the year off, you know, uh -huh. by not being on a set. And it's, it's, it's weird. I'm also so happy to be able to do that. And you can afford to take a year off. I can afford yeah. to yeah. do but it. That's a and I can a, emotionally I can deal. afford to do it. Yeah, it's a huge, it huge yeah. deal, yeah, it is. you know, to be able to do that. But Yep. You know, the even harder thing, like for you, of course, is going to be like, what do you do next? Yeah. You know, there used to be a time when, you know, we pounded the pavement, we went to auditions. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to five auditions a week, you, hopefully you get a call back or you get a job. You took the job they gave you. Yeah. And then when the thing happens and the thing breaks, you're like, okay, what do I do next? All of a sudden, you have four scripts sitting on a desk that you're reading and you have to make a choice. 
And that's when things get hard. Really? You know? That's when yeah. things get difficult. Because you can make a wrong choice and be like, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. That was a horrible moment. Yeah, yeah certainly you're kind of getting yeah. outside of yourself yeah. and having to look at like, yeah. what do I want to be? You know, yeah. all these questions yeah. that are not interesting only, yeah. but that you're kind of forced you to You know, two things. Good for you for doing it because you have kids. And I, a lot of the reasons, some of the reasons why I kind of laid low was I, I always wanted to be a dad and then I got the opportunity to be a dad. So I thought, man, if I lose money, I'm good with it. And I, you know, I was having this conversation with Bill Hader the other day and he, he you know, was going through something. I said, dude, trust me. Hang out with your kids as much as you can, as long as you can. Mm -hmm. You will never regret it. Mm -hmm. You'll look back. You're going to lose some jobs. Mm -hmm. It's okay. In the long run, that's the thing. And you're right, man. You know, that, that thing of saying, I don't, I don't, now it's different. You know, now it's all different because now I have many opportunities. Then you got to be smarter. Right. How you do things. In the old days, I remember I was in London with Jack Nicholson. We were doing Batman. And we were going, we, he was going somewhere and he said, come on, come along with me which is an experience in an office. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need and, more there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're in the car, and he's talking, and he's talking about this movie. He says, Keats, if this hits, which we all knew it was like a huge risk. If, if it goes down, you're going down in the largest way. You're going down in flames, and that's going to be a big, hard recovery. Uh -huh. But I always knew if it worked, this could be a game changer and, and change my landscape, right? So Jack says, says this thing's a hit. You can go out and do four or five flops and don't even worry about it. He was maybe not four or five, but used to be you got away with three. Uh -huh. Didn't matter. Not now, man. Mm. One. Right? Mm. One, one, one. Move, which is yeah. fucked up. Yeah. I mean, it's how many just, bites of the apple do you get? Yeah. I definitely think in a, in a similar way, this one that I just did, Moon Knight, Moon Knight, for me, felt the same way. Like, man, if this, if I go, I, I'm going to go down hard on this thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, because just the, the, the level of embarrassment <laughs> that it would be, you know, once you throw on a cape, uh -huh. you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, but, but, and you're out in front of it, yeah. you know, it's like, holy shit, I'm really doing it. Uh -huh. And commit the interesting to that. The interesting thing about all it. that, though, was that you, you kind of had a little path that from like Star Wars to this next thing yeah. to like, Doom's fucking amazing, by the way. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, doing yeah, is yeah. amazing. To do little to do with me, <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, but, I mean yeah, yeah, little to do with any of us. I was yeah. talking to Tom about that very same thing. And when I signed that nine picture deal to do to to, yeah. to be Nick Fury, it's like, yeah. how long I got to stay alive to do nine pictures? <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing they were gonna make nine pictures in like a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna be in them. But when yeah. you pick a path or you find a way to get into these franchise like things yeah. that are huge successes that give you the opportunity to do these other things. Mm. Yeah. That give you that artistic satisfaction mm -hmm. while you're doing that movie star satisfaction thing. Big check, take care of the family. I can take some time off. Yeah. And chill. Yeah. Well the trick was all those things. Well this one was like make it work. Can, can I do both? You mm -hmm. know, it was like can you smuggle in the thing that matters to me, right? The reason why I like doing it, the what I love to do. And you know, every morning when that alarm goes off, to be excited to yeah. get to work and yeah. not just be like, I gotta get through this to get that check or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? And and it seemed like this was an opportunity, I think because maybe because of the TV landscape and because, uh, strangely enough, there does seem to be a lot more risk taking mm. uh, in the television, oh, man. for sure, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. right now that we got a chance to do this bizarre thing that yeah. happened to be in the, you know, in the case of a superhero genre film. Mm. But but to use that kind of mythology to actually do something real and to, you know, do kind of maximalist work. <laughs> but it's interesting. Like normally, Marvel calls and people say yes fairly immediately. That wasn't. I mean, you you were hesitant. It was so much about like, is this the stupidest thing? Is this a smart thing? Should I? Do? What does this mean? You know, it was so. It was such a kind of mental torment just yeah. to make a decision. Sure. Like, so what are the reassurances that you needed to sort of get there? Um, that, that it was going to be, that. it was in there, but also yeah. that it was like, that it was going to be a team, you know, mm -hmm. that like we were all going to want to be making the same thing. I think that's, yeah. that, that's for me super important because it is, it's a collaborative medium. But don't you find that, that we all are in positions where we've constantly subsidized ourselves for the next job? Uh -huh. What does that mean? I like that. Well, subsidized means that you know you, you earn a bit of money for one job and then you go off and oh, got it. do yes. lunchtime theater. And uh, exactly. you guys don't do that, but we do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's our part of our culture. 
But even so, I still think in, in movies, you still you do the same. You know, you one do, for them, one for me. One for that, one for that. You say, oh, well, that one is okay, and this is this is fine. This is where I'm heading. I'll, I'll do that one. Oh, that wasn't so good. Okay, so that will earn enough from that one, so I can go on to that one. And I think that happens more than we admit, uh -huh, really. Sure. You know, so it's a, it's much more chaotic, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And yet, sometimes out of that chaos, there is a career. Mm. You know, mm. there's a career like you two, you know, definitely. There's, mm. a, there's, there's definitely a career, you know, all of us actually. You know. I think the wonderful thing, though, um, the discovery for me of long form television. Yeah, the best In terms thing. of what it is, streaming, doing a series, whatever yeah. it is, the satisfaction of delving into that character yeah. in a way that. I didn't have in an hour and a half. Absolutely. Yeah. I, time, too, you know, I, I sat I, home I, and I, I did it in my head, but I couldn't present it to the people. Well, I, I, there was I, I stuff think, that I, I wanted people to see about me I, that I, couldn't I, show. I think that's kicked movies into touch a lot. Yeah. yeah. You know, because in movies, it's three acts, first, second, and third, yeah. whereas in long form, it's an endless second act. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the endless second act, you can do so much in yeah. the second act, and it serves, particularly, I think, from our point of view as actors, it serves us brilliantly. Uh, you know, I think television is wonderful like that. And American television is caught up. We've been lucky because, yeah. Tom and I, because we come from a good tradition of television. Yeah. But the only time that television was bad, and he was probably a nipper then, <laughs> it was, it was in the 90s in the UK uh -huh. when it was really shit. Uh -huh. I thought, if I'm going to get paid for crap, Mm. I'd rather get paid for crap in America than get paid for crap in the UK. <laughs> yeah. and that was that was my decision. My decision to go to a, here, uh -huh. and I, you know, because I'd been a leading theater actor yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. I decided I'm going to be a character actor. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want the burden of that anymore. And I want to do what I always wanted to do as a kid, which was do movies. And I came and I did. I did five. I did five movies. I wrote an article called "A Year of Actioning Badly," <laughs> you know, which was doing these <laughs> movies, which were yeah, they were tough. Tough yeah. going, you know, and, uh, you know, it was hard. Yeah. But, uh, and I could observe how difficult it was for people like you and Andy Garcia on the film that we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How difficult that was. And uh, we were in a slightly better film together. It was a yeah. slightly better script. Of course. But, it, it, but it, we, you could see what the difficulty it was uh -huh. and how that opening weekend was marking people's careers. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought, I don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. I don't want to be in that situation where my, my whole life is depending on that opening weekend, so I'm going to stick to just coming on, doing two scenes, and then buggering off. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah. I think you, yeah, 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 you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what? The responsibility of that is weird. You know, it's yeah. very weird. It's very strange. It's like I was trying to figure out how you kids are going to measure what your success is in terms of how you move the comma on your check yeah. in a streaming world. And because we had a, a barometer, asses and seats. Yep. Yeah. You know? yeah. That was the barometer. Yeah. What's the barometer now? It feels like social media is like a big thing for our generation. Totally. And like they, totally. you know, like want you to grow your presence on there and it's just like- yeah, How many followers you got yeah. before you get the job? Like, uh, we oh need boy. at least uh, three million followers yeah. before we can consider you for this. Quite before I booked this, that was every <laughs> role awesome, that I went man. out for. It was like, how many followers do you have? Wow. And I didn't have a following. So, <laughs> yeah. so you were into yeah. Television in that way has created more opportunity than the movies has. Yeah, it for really sure. It has. I mean, it's just uh, because, of, because, as Sam says, because of the long form, it's created enormous opportunities for us to sure. do stuff in a way. And there's a lot of great stuff out there. But Quincy, uh, I'm like, I'm curious for you, I mean, to the point of like, when you think about the second thing you do, mm -hmm. and I imagine it comes with, with pressure for all the reasons they, they are saying it does, yeah. How are you thinking about it? Do you want to do something that's totally different? Do you yeah, yeah. I, I can't smile as much this next time. Uh, <laughs> Man. It's so much smiling. It's a uh, lot of smiling. But like. <laughs> <laughs> that's who he is. It's clear yeah, and simple. Yeah, just yeah. happens to be who he is. He's just they one like, big smile. Yeah. 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 It was like, did you practice that magic smile? I'm like, nah, I've had these same teeth. Yeah. 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 Um, See, but you've also, but you've also uh, passed a hurdle now that a lot of your contemporaries have not, you mm. know? It's 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 so weird because when we were casting Ptolemy, yep. the show that I did, yeah. you know, you could tell who was at home reading with their sister or their brother. Huh. Right. You know, it's a lot of self tape. They're not in the room right. with mm. the casting people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we used to be. Yeah, yeah. Like we used to go in and you yeah. know, you sit there, you yeah. go in the room, and all the other actors you know are there. To, now people are at home sending tapes to people, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're acting with their mom, 
Yep. Well, they can you already feel on the other know, side I, for themselves. But and, I, I think there's a huge downside. To oh that. my God! A huge yeah. downside. I can't because, imagine how I mean, difficult that would be. I have, a, I have a son who's an actor, and uh, you know he spends a fortune doing all that stuff, and yeah. nobody, there's no record, and he never sees anybody, and he never gets any <laughs> comeback. Feedback. Yeah. No yeah. feedback. No yeah. back. Yeah. He, he yeah, does yeah, the yeah. stuff. He does. He puts it out there, and he's a good actor, my kid. And he puts it out there, and he, he gets no feedback. And through COVID, it was. He, he almost became suicidal because it was just impossible for him mm. doing that. It's time. insane. And I think this is true of a lot of particularly young actors now, what they have to deal with. You know, we, didn't, yeah. we, were, we met the casting. You think of the great Marion Doherty's and those great yeah, casting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Even if really, you didn't get that job, they remembered you. Exactly. Said, you did exactly. such a great audition the yeah, last that, time. And I had with, to call you exactly, back there for this. Exactly. Week. And that doesn't happen anymore. No. A, a well, good one does. Pre-pandemic, I did go into a few rooms and like I was able to build up that rapport with casting directors. But like since then, I haven't read in front of anybody. Well, I, and also it's going to encourage a laziness that, mm. that they will not go back to that time when they mm -hmm. were casting directors, you met them. Because they think, oh, it's so easy. We get the actors to do it. And you go, no, you're kind of like in a union where we've got to stop it. We've got yeah. to stop yeah, that yeah, going yeah. on. We don't want that anymore for young actors. We don't want young actors put in that difficult position right. where they it's can't even afford to you know, have a dinner at night. Do you think like that um, has changed people's perception of what acting even is. Like, I wonder how that's changed for, for, for you guys as yeah. well, you know? Uh, like, just, it, it just seems to me sometimes, like, lately I feel like there's been a misperception, not, not even a real education or understanding in the public, especially in this country, of what it even is. For like, sure. I was having this conversation the other day. The, the, I'm kind of fascinated by how people know, and I mean, I see performances and I go, Man, that's a really good performance. That, that person's really good. But how did they know? Because people learn through osmosis almost. There's so much media. And I think some kid who was eight years old, you know, maybe five, you know, ten years ago or something like that, he's he's so indoctrinated to look somewhere when I'll just speak for myself. My goal is always try just try to be as original as you can be or have your own thought create something that really came from you. Yet, everything we do came from something I remember from school or something that happened to me in the street. I actually had a gun to my head one time, so I go, mm, I'm gonna hang on to that. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Be That's useful. gonna work for yeah. me somewhere down the road. And, and all those experiences lead to something, right? Because you use them, sure. right? Now, I don't think there's that connection to things. Like, I would, I'd be curious to see where people's performances yeah. come from. Because I think it's a knockoff of a knockoff of a knockoff of a knockoff. I'm sure I was influenced by some actor somewhere. I guarantee you. I probably can yeah. say, oh, man, I remember that thing you yeah. did. That's the hippest move. The thinking behind it was so cool. I'm going to steal that. Um, but now, man, it's, it's removed from that. Also, and people are weirdly kind of good, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they, I go, they got more examples. But Look how many think, good kids there think are. The, ma good the magic, actors. I always find, the magic is what happens between you. Oh, for sure. You know, and that's no, what, and no when doubt. you're doing self tapes or you're auditioning, you're doing it on your own. Yeah, that's yeah. And you're not experiencing the camp. My, the most exciting work I feel I've been a part of is when you're in a scene with someone. For sure. And you're doing the tennis rally, and they're just doing it cross court, and you're like, ooh, yeah. that was yeah. nice. And then yeah. you flip it back, Absolutely. and you're in an amazing rally. And I, that's the bit I feel is, that's the root of the work for me. I mean, we've done it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. like. And that hasn't Across changed. Across the net, yeah. Oh, I don't think that has changed. I think that's still very But prevalent. it feels like it needs to move towards it, some in, sort of in audition, form. In auditioning, it doesn't. No, in yeah. I mean, of course, we've done theater yeah, but, and stuff. I'm, but that depends on whether, you know, that person came from, you know, Rada Juilliard or... I was an influencer, and you know, <laughs> I have I have 15 million followers, uh -huh. so I'm in this movie with you now. Yeah, yeah. and super yeah. comfortable but in front of the camera. Yeah. Well, well, right. yeah. totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally comfortable in totally front of the camera. Yeah. 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 Not intimidated but by, Sam, the, by the just, experience Sam, just to give you a bit of comfort, it's a fashion thing. Mm. You know, that this too will pass. Uh, you know, I don't know, it will move into some other area. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm more I, of an Well, the new area, area is what I'm, I'm much, about. I'm but more in, the, in the work, it, surely it will come back to the... Yeah, I think so. Like, I remember we did our first scene in the first Avengers movie, and, you know, I'd never met Sam before. Uh -huh. I, he knew he's a completely iconic actor, and it, the two characters who have both are very confident <laughs> and not afraid of each other, Nick Fury and Loki, and, uh, mm. and it's a three-page scene, four-page scene. It's fun. And we were both 
came ready, came uh -huh. did our homework, and you just, I was just listening and responding. And it was really exciting because I didn't know what Sam was going to do. Yeah. We didn't have any rehearsal. He didn't know what I was going to do. And that's where the scene was born. It's, it was uh -huh. like... Living, breathing. Yeah, breathing. and then you did something, I remember, and, and it was extremely powerful, and I found myself going, ooh, <laughs> as Loki. <laughs> Oh, like, like feeling the feeling the sting of it in a, but yeah, and I, on on our show for um, for Marvel and Disney Plus uh, on the Loki show, yeah. um, I was across from across the table from Owen Wilson a lot, uh -huh. and we had so many sort of long. In fact, in the first episode, there's a long twenty five page scene that's basically just an interrogation, a uh -huh. kind of analysis, and. Um, he came ready and I was ready and we did it across the table and he said to me, I was just like, this kind of feels like a play. Interesting. And he was so excited by it. He was yeah. like, this feels, it's, it's the in the interaction, sure. that's, where the, that's where the magic is. But it's that's that other thing too yeah. though, where you meet actors now, it's like, uh, that have never done anything from beginning to end. Right. Yeah. In one night, yeah. you know, like, they've never done a play. It's yeah. interesting, I'm yeah. curious more recently when you signed on to do a series, I mean, were there things about these characters that you wanted to bring to it that perhaps were not in these scripts and all of a sudden perhaps you do have some creative flexibility that didn't exist in the films? Well, you do at a certain point, yeah. uh, only because you physically inhabit it in a way, they, they have a perception in their minds of what they want their character to be. Yep. And they hire you because you have something that they think you're going to inhabit that character with. And when you come yeah. and you fill that character up with life and you start to give them how that character thinks and feels, then everything starts to change exactly. around who you are. And you made sure. like the was story saying. shapes around. So, what, what did you want to do? Okay, so you're going to do a Nick Fury series. Like, what what were you not able to do in in the films that you can do here? What what excited you about it, and what perhaps made you also a little nervous in, in the way that Oscar was saying he was? Well, I can have a whole life as Nick Fury that's not Nick Fury at work. Mm -hmm. You know, we get to go home with me, yep. and see what happens with me at home, or when I'm alone. Uh -huh. Or, you know, when I'm not so strong in Nick Fury or when I, you know, take off a back brace. Uh -huh. Because yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Nick Fury is old. You know, uh -huh. some, you know uh -huh. things that you can do that you can't normally do because the character has to present this stunt -da -da yep. kind of front when that's happening. And that's what the movies are for. Yeah. And when you get to do yeah. it in long form, you get to show... You know, even superheroes have their down moments. Yeah. Not me. You know? Well, I, I, <laughs> I mean, a down moment for you is an up moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. so up. He's a down guy. Yeah. You know, but all those things are there, and you have an opportunity to do it. And they give you that yeah. leeway to feel your way into that. Yeah, Once yeah. they see you and feel you and know who you are, that gives everybody an opportunity to come and bring a, a personality. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the thing about the Avengers. They all had different personalities yeah, yeah. and they were able to blossom once, you know, we got through the initial film. Yeah. The initial film was to introduce these people to who they are and these are the things they can do. Now, this is how they interact. They're not yeah. all nice, you know, because I used to fuss, I fussed at them, I still fuss about Civil War because I'm like, how could the kids fight and Nick Fury not show up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they go, Sorry, what's no, going on here? Wasn't in it yeah. Everybody go to your room. You know? <laughs> but they didn't need me for that. Uh -huh. but they also, did, but they didn't. But yeah. We're also at the mercy of the director. Yep. And we're also at the mercy of the script. Mm. And when you've got a great script, there's no problem. Yep. Yeah. That feeds you and that gives you all the mystery that you yeah, need sure, to yeah. create the role that you want to create. When you have a piece of shit, <laughs> and we've all done shit, and yes. we know what we have to do to, to make shit work, we uh -huh. have to compensate, and it's not very satisfying. I'm sure not. You know, we'll, whatever you're doing, if, it, it, if you ain't got the words, yeah. you can't do the action. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. that's there, it. There's not a world where you take it and you make it something where it feels more satisfactory. Well, you can there make is it that world, but yeah. you, you, There is a world like that, but, it's, but you're also compensating mm. for somebody else's lack for somebody, of talent, yeah. lack of ability. It's you know? more work. Yeah, it's, you know, you it's know? fine because, but you have to reach a point, or you get to a point. I'm sure all of us are at that point. I don't know if you are yet, where if a director says some shit to you and you go, "I'm not gonna do that," you know, because that's not what you know I would do, and you know, and that sounds like one of those. Well, my character wouldn't do that. Yeah. No, it's not that. 
It's just that um, I don't get to go to the editing room with you. Mm -hmm. I've done mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You go to the editing room. If you want me to do something different, you're going to watch the thing that you want to watch first. And if I don't give it to you, then you have to do what I did. I think where we as doing. actors yeah. get completely underestimated is in our literate sense. We are really surprisingly, intuitively literate. We yeah. know about subject, verb, and object. We yes. really do. We, yeah. we deal with that every day. And a lot of directors haven't a, a fucking clue yeah. one way or the other about that. They just don't oh. know what it is because they're concerned about a visual thing. They're concerned mm. about what it's just all part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't understand yeah. what the stuff Frame is. Frame composition. Uh -huh. What the stuff <laughs> is, what the, what, they, what the meat of the job is. Yep. And it's the meat of the job is in the script. Yes. You, yep. If you don't have a script, you've got nothing. Sure. I felt this absolutely this, the same as Sam. Having played Loki for, I think, six movies, doing the, doing the show was, it was a risk in a way. Like what you were saying, I was like, I just don't want to break it. Yeah. Um, but also there was this extraordinary opportunity to break him open, mm -hmm. you know, take him away from all the things that people knew he was associated with, away from his brother, away from his father, away from his home, put him through this kind of Kafka-esque, nightmare where he's confronted with all his cycles of terrible destructive behavior and mm -hmm. and um and to show him on the back foot and actually open him up and this kind of very together controlled character is someone who's always kind of thinking 10 steps ahead completely vulnerable and unsure and confused and um full of doubt and in a way, to, it was because he's such a he's got such a confronting silhouette, doesn't he? And, and yeah. to kind of break him down to this place of raw vulnerability and then build him back up through the story it was a real. I, I loved it. It was an, an amazing gift. Do you approach it. like each character the same, or is it like because four of you I think? I don't know if you have uh, played superheroes, right? So it's I've never like, played a superhero. I've never no. played a superhero. Oh, I've played a super villain. Yeah. Never played a superhero. Right. Oh, uh, Nick Fury doesn't have any. World. Nothing. Nick yeah. Fury is just a guy. Not okay. Yeah. I got you. Is it he's an influencer? He's an influencer. <laughs> he's, he's an influencer. Well, like Michael was saying, you find, or like you know, you were both saying the same thing. You, you if you stood outside it for too long. Mm -hmm and thought about what it looks like in the world, I find it just too terrifying. Yeah. So you just ground it in what you know. Right. So when I first started playing Loki, I was like, okay, he's a son, I know what that is. He's a brother, I know what that is. He's got all this internal kind of pain, but he's masking it with something, I know what that is. Um, and you, you find your own way through it. You sort of, you, you build the mask, as it were. Yeah. And then you fill the mask with life. You find know? the human parts of yeah. it. And you can't mm -hmm. play this icon. Yeah, I feel like that's what I did a lot for Magic. Like, I couldn't play this icon. I had to see how to play a kid, like, at 20 years old. That's you know? very smart. And, you know, and figure out what that looks like. And did you watch the Apple series? Yeah. 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 It's kind of whack. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of out there, right? I mean, it's like watching, you know, it's, I mean, to be that? that big a personality when you're that young. It's yeah. Like, like at 14, woo. 15, you got grown men coming up to you calling you magic. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Or to have the principal of the school come to you to tell you you're in charge of the racial unrest at the school. Yeah. Be, and then be take like, care right, of it. Cool. Take care of it. <laughs> like, I got what, it. What yep. confidence does that take in yourself to be like, I got this? Like, and also it'd be like, maybe I don't, but like I'm gonna figure it out. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know. It's um it's fun. It's a fun role. So. I love that. Mm -hmm. Oscar, I wanna come back to you. Your co-star in scenes for marriage, Jessica Chastain, talked about she had to go to a place that was so dark. And she's not sure she sort of can ever go to these places as as an actress again. And I'm curious for you if you felt any of that and how your sort of individual, your personal sort of boundaries shift with with time, with experience, with success. Mm. Like, you know, before I'd, I'd be like, what limb do I have to take, <laughs> cut off to make this scene 3% better? Uh -huh. You know, yeah, I'll yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. But I think that it's about inspiration, right? So, you know, process, the whole reason process exists so is, is, is to inspire, right? Mm. And sometimes you don't need a wild process to be inspired mm. by something. Sometimes the words themselves will do it. Um, sometimes the character is enough. Sometimes the situation is so harrowing that that's enough to inspire a whole history of a character. Yeah. And sometimes you gotta 
What, what did he eat for breakfast? What did he do this? In order to try, you know, to inspire some imagination and some sense of truth, right? Or some yeah. sense of uh, some emotional, uh, in interesting thing. Uh, but boundaries, I think, are becoming more important uh -huh. for me now. I mean, you have kids and uh, time is, is the most valuable commodity. And, yep. and, and I think with, with, with scenes from a marriage, the scene, the, the the scenes themselves, the that was, was so harrowing about it. Not so much the characters. Yeah. But also, it mirrored a lot of things in my own life. Sure. Just like literal things, like I'd I'd be reading a bedtime story to the young actress that's a five year old mm. with a little bunny lamp, <laughs> and then go home, arrive just in time to sit in the bed with the same exact bunny lamp somehow and <laughs> read a story to my five year old. You know, it just, it just starts to fuck with your head yep. because yeah. you yep. know we're just a human being, yep. and so you know that's a weird situation. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and and so it was. It was um, after a while. I think also just all the nature of it. You know, it was right in the height of the pandemic. We was in this factory in the Bronx that had been turned into a studio. Uh, it was only like 60 people. And these were very long. Almost every shot was like a 30-minute take. You know, mm. like long. Yeah. And it felt like a weird hybrid between theater and TV and film. Uh, and it with someone that I've known for 20 years as well. So all those things created a very uncanny yeah. situation that I think going back, I probably would have been a little more mindful about like, you know, a little clearer boundaries. And the truth is, even if it wouldn't have been quite as real or good, yep. you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm getting better with that idea that I don't have to cut off a limb just to make it slightly better. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. But, but, you know? yeah. Do you know what? You, you don't have a choice. It's in you somewhere. You, you say, you know, I'm going to cruise on this one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First of all, it's impossible. You, you get there. If it works the same, man. You're going to do a 15 second ad for something for Vaseline. Uh -huh. You say, okay, man, I'm all in. Because for, yeah. for that minute, yeah, I don't know how to not be all in. If I'm here, I may as well do it. Every time I think I'm going to cruise on this one, I can't. And that's why mm. it's in you somewhere. It's just, you can fight it all you want. You can say, I don't care, I ain't just going to do it. But somewhere, it's in you. And you're done. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can say you're, you're going to work yeah. one day. You can say, I'm going to market. Piece of cake. <laughs> yeah. Piece of cake. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get there, before you know it, you're like pissed with the fucking director because they're not doing this <laughs> yeah. shit. And it's taking too long to do some <laughs> shit. It's, it's like, God damn it. This is important. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not not important. You know, the, the, the late, great uh, Bill Hurt, you know, that's yeah. what he said to me. He's like, you know, before every, every take, I, I tell myself, you're going to die. And then, you know, because yeah, yeah. he did. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> he eventually he did. But he knew it, you know, and, and then he reminded himself before every take, just like, this is a chance, this is my chance to be alive. Yeah. Sure. I have that's to the, be alive. That's the now. risk, isn't it? Like yeah. you were saying, when you get the four, the four scripts, or, as it were, on your desk, and yeah. you have to choose one, like, we, we, you risk every time. And it, I suppose it, this is how you have to look yourself in the mirror at the end of it and go, did you? Did he give you? Did he give everything you had? Um, and that's the thing. That's the thing that. Well, I first you got to be a person who actually watches your work. You know? That's how you learn. How do you know if you're good or not? You know. Right. Yeah. But you know, that's a that's a repository of things. You know, I'm a I'm a a cinephile. I'm a junkie. You know, I mm -hmm. watch movies all the all time because mm. that's what I did from the time I was a kid. I watched movies, black and white movies, all the time. I, I do Robert Mitchum sometimes when I'm in a movie. I yeah, do, you I know, I do Cagney. I, uh -huh. do, you know, I do old people. Uh -huh. you know, that I watch the movies because that's who I watch. You know? I, I love the yeah. old character actors. Yeah. Jimmy Gleason. I mean, yeah. Jimmy Gleason, who plays the cab driver in mm -hmm. Bishop's Wife, you know, that whole sequence. There's a stylization to that kind of performing, all right? That didn't Every necessarily now, reflect natural life or realist, well, realism. I, I, in a well, way. I don't know I'm, about that, yeah. Oscar. I, I, I think we've, we, we've got different, you know, there's a whole, life is different, but, you know, people did speak a lot faster. You know, people did speak like that. We've done, and we actually speak faster than we think we do sometimes. You know, we yeah. think we're, we're, you know, so we take our time over stuff. But when you see those actors negotiate the script brilliantly and with such speed and such dexterity, and it's, and it's real. It's more real. It's as real as anything. You know, yeah. the idea that Brando discovered reality, I think, is a nonsense. You know, <laughs> you know, the, right. you know other it's actors like, yeah, in the, the 30s were doing. I mean, yeah. if you look at, 
I mean, if you look at Gary Cooper, if you look at uh, Jimmy Stewart, I mean, there's that, that, yeah. sense well, I think there's a difference between truthful and real, sure. reali realism or naturalism, you know? Well, I mean, something truthful. can be super truthful and still have a heightened quality of, mm -hmm. like, Absolutely. incredibly literate, in, you know, incredibly articulate, Absolutely. you know, and, and so it's not a... Yeah, and I wonder if like it's time to in a way move more yeah. in that direction because being natural in front of a camera is not very special mm. anymore. Well, you know, Montgomery Cliff, enough. James Dean, and Brando changed everything. Those guys changed yeah. everything, in in mostly a really really good, good way. way. But I agree with you. I look at some of the things, and you'll you'll see some old performance, and you know the kind of things that probably years ago I didn't laugh at, but I would go, wow. Look how people did that. I enjoyed it, but look how crazy it was. And then I go back and I look at it and I, I, I see something that kind of just knocks me out. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You see the subtlety in there, it's like, oh my God. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. right. It's I like craft, craft yeah. really. I think it's the craft, you know? I mean, and, and that, that whole thing with Montgomery Clifton and, and, uh, and Brandon, all it started in the 20s. And it's been 100 years when, when you know, Mos the Moscow Art Theater first made it to New York, you know, right. and began this process that it's like, it, that's what modern acting is now, right? Yeah. It's been the same ideas for a hundred years. But the great thing about television, and I've thought this a long time about certain rules, and, uh, or any rule, if you're doing a play every night, there comes that point where you hear yourself, like, where you, your, your character is saying something, and you hear it totally different than you ever thought you'd hear, and you go, or, or you, uh, and I'm asking as much as saying, you say, oh, I've actually misinterpreted this uh, thing. 100%. I've actually, I, 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 I absolutely agree with and you. It, totally but how totally great how great is it you get the chance to do that well, on yeah. night, you know, in the third month of your Well, this your is where run, people underestimate go, the theater, oh, for example. Uh, they think, they think, they, idea, they yeah. think the theater is endless repetition. It isn't. It's not. It really yeah, isn't right. endless repetition. You're di rediscovering it every night. And mm. also, the important part, element in the theater is the audience. The audience, yeah. 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 The audience they make you do something different. They make us do things every night. in a certain kind of way. You go, you know. Like I had a director once who said, you know, when I was doing Strange Interlude on Broadway and uh, we were getting a lot of laughs and the director was a pain in the ass. He, he said, you know, please don't let the audience hijack the play and take it to Cuba. <laughs> and I said, what the hell are you talking about? I said, they're enjoying it. They spent their money. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're enjoying it and they're just, they're feeding us, you know, yeah. and it's, it's life, it's going. And it's you know what's an underrated form? Sitcoms. Yeah, yeah, sitcoms are an underrated form because as bad as some of them have been and are, if you really watch what you have to do in 22 and a half minutes or whatever mm -hmm. it is to tell the story, and it yeah, is a yeah. little bit of theater because there's a live audience and all that. Yeah. But, and then to be funny on top of it. So when you see it done well, it's kind of tremendous. Oh, yeah. like, no, I think reason. that's what it, <laughs> Oscar had said something earlier um, when you're talking about sort of the, the lengths you'll go. I'm curious, you guys are at places in your careers where you can afford to be picky. You can afford to say, eh, I won't do that. I'm curious for what those things are for you guys. Is it a type of character to nudity, to, to, to whatever it is? I won't shoot outside my house anymore. <laughs> No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've, just done a thing. I, I've just done a thing where I had to be nude. And? I wasn't nude. <laughs> really? I had a body double. Yeah, yeah, really? You know, I'm 76 for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, the guy was, uh, no, I mustn't say anything. <laughs> but it, but, but that, was, you know, that, was, that was something I thought, I, I don't know, because I kept saying to the director, do I really have to be nude? And I'm supposed to come on nude. Not only am I supposed to have nude, but I'm supposed to have an erection as oh. well. Oh, oh there you go. Okay. Well, right. There's some acting. Yeah, you know, that was really acting. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I just, I just, <laughs> I just <laughs> say, <laughs> yeah, I said, <laughs> let, come on, eh? let the, let the I was working with Lady, Lisa Kudrow and, and Edie Falco. I said, let their reaction tell you what's tell happening. Yeah, than yeah, than yeah. What I have to yeah. do. Mm -hmm. And if they're weeping, then you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, <laughs> you, and that's where your experience comes in. So yeah, things like that. <laughs> the huge difference of what happens now in, well, television has always been TV because it's a different kind of camera. Yep. But in the movie business, you know, once film stop being used, uh -huh. it's a whole nother kind of business, uh -huh. you know, because I work with kids who have no idea how much it costs to make a movie, mm. you know, yeah. Yeah. because they don't have to send the film out to be processed every day, sure. go to I, dailies the yeah, next that's day. so interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. here's a question, because I've only made a couple of mo movies on 35 millimeter. Mm. Was there a greater sense of stakes 
when the camera was rolling? Oh, yeah. Was there a sense of like, like hear, uh, was it was that because you know when it's digital, it's like you can keep the camera running, yeah. reset, do three yeah. in a row. Yeah. But when there was film question. in the camera, was did you really feel that question. elevation of like, okay, we're going now. We don't have. You don't have rolls and rolls of film out the back. With let's let's get ourselves ready. Let's That's go. Really there was a director. Can't do like, eighteen yeah. takes. Yeah. 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 No. And then yeah. no, print uh, print print three and yeah. seven. Well, it depends yeah. on the director. What? Right. I mean, it always yeah. depends on. I mean, if you work with somebody like David Fincher who does thirty-eight takes. Yeah. You yeah. know, and uh, you know, and he's only noticed the acting by take twelve, <laughs> <laughs> and by then the actors are saying, "What the fuck's going what's on? What's wrong? You know, I mean, what is that? You know, what's, wrong? what's actually wrong? <laughs> I mean, Mark Ruffalo this and not, Anthony Edwards is not good and for you. Had that problem, <laughs> and I, they they couldn't believe it because we go to thirty eight takes, yeah. and they they kept saying, "What's happening?" I said, "He's he hasn't noticed you. <laughs> he doesn't well, notice right. you until take twelve, and then he says, "What's happened to the actors? <laughs> well, they're bored." <laughs> You know, they've done that, yeah. you know, they've shot the load, they're bored, you know. Because yeah. mm -hmm. one of the things that I, that I used to think about was, because I, you know, as you were yeah. saying, I come from the f f beginning of my career was just all plays in the theatre, in the theatre, Shakespeare and, and that sort of thing. And when I started doing on camera work, I felt this sense of like, here we go on the first take. Mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of people around me were like, we'll do another one. But that, fe <laughs> that feeling of um, mm -hmm. when you're in the theatre, it's like you walk out, and that's the that's yeah. the take for the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that sense of like get ready. Film acting is like shooting a rifle. You better get it right. Oh yeah. You, you don't oh, have another sure. night. Yeah, 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 yeah. That and actually was one of the yeah. hardest things for me. The transition to yeah. letting it go that, that that night, going home from set. Yeah. And being like that was it. And I know like, for a fact uh, I didn't get it, get it, and I didn't do the thing I wanted to do, yeah. and that was my that was my chance. That's and right. we don't that. get we don't get that. But do you my my favorite word in film is rap. <laughs> That's my favorite yeah. word. It's rap when it's over. Yeah. You know, when we, oh, good, thank God, we don't have to do that again. It's yeah. done. Let's move on to the next thing. I've now gotten to that place, but it took a long time. But then it takes they, a while they, to get the crew to pay attention to you. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, uh, you, you have to be really doing something for the crew to stop and go, oh, shit. Huh. Mm. If you get it, that relief of like, I'd never have to do that again. Mm. That's yeah. like I, that's mm. that moment done. If it's a very emotional thing or a very difficult thing, and you've got it, and you're like, okay, I can leave mm. that there. Yeah, but do you go to the monitor to watch it? Honestly, I never even go watch. Mm -mm. Either felt right or it didn't well, feel right. Well, the whole business of monitor watching is something I really <laughs> hate. It's horrendous. I really hate it. You know, I, I don't think I, I got a tongue up. I nearly. Probably got cancelled for this, but a, a young actor we were doing, we were working. He ran to the monitor. I said, "Don't do that." I said, "Really, don't do that." I said, "Because you're you're killing your impulse. Trust yeah. yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Because what's up there is not. It's something different from what you've just done. What you just did. What yeah. you've just done. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. And I know you're thinking, I want to know what my effect is. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Trust mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and and of course, that's what that whole because you know monitors were invented by Jerry Lewis. You know, mm -hmm. he invented the, mm -hmm. the, the, the monitor. Did you know that? No. Yeah. yeah, he invented them yeah. for, to, in order to monitor himself when he was making movies. So that's why the whole video thing came in. But uh, I mean, you know, I see endless run up to the monitor. I say, please, you know, you're, you're kind of ruining something for yourself. Yeah, I'm not a monitor watcher. All right, we unfortunately we've come to the end. So I'm going to ask, what's the type of part that you haven't yet played that you love Hollywood to sort of see you as? Is there a dream role? I want to play a king. Yeah. yeah, like a, a period king of some sort, uh, specifically Ma Masa Musa. Uh -huh. We manifesting like, it right here. Yeah, and give like a big monologue speech to <laughs> the, the, the entire that's kingdom. Or something. That's great. I think that just feels good. Right? I think you're right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's I'm happy to see that. Yeah. 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 What about the rest of you? Is, is there something I you haven't yet? I want to play a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. I anymore. think we're making a movie right now. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'll play the fool. That's a five year watch. I'll play the fool. There's always a fool in the king's court. I That'll just want to laugh more. You want to laugh more? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm mean, fed yeah. up with drama. You I really a lot am. Of I'm fed up with drama. I'm fed up with heavy stuff. I just want comedy. I just want to laugh. Huh. When, I, when I switch on the tube and watch it, I'm looking for a laugh. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, I mean, especially at my age, when yeah. you, you know, the end is nearer than the beginning. So Can I say going, something? I just want to laugh. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. People find succession, some people 
Five Succession very funny. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Great it's, great it's, it's funny, and that's what, and that's the enjoyable yeah. side of it. Because yeah. they're, Incredibly they're, hilarious. It's, it's the, the edge the, that makes people laugh. They're so naughty, everybody. is so naughty in it. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's very enjoyable. That's what I watched it. while we were making Scenes from Marriage. Is I would go into my dressing room and watch Succession to like relax from <laughs> the intensity. No, of the, the Succession so family good. is a wonderful family. Yeah. I have to say, I'm, it's just a great, it's a great cast. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. What about the rest of you? You're looking at me like I'm crazy because you played so every. so many. Yeah. 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 Yeah, do you Not every, but I just don't think about it. Yeah, you know? I don't think about it. I just kind of read a script and go, oh wow, this this looks like fun, huh. you know, and I'll do it. You know, but you know, people go, we really love to see you in a rom com. Like, okay. Well, yeah. but, <laughs> I gotta read it first. Yeah. For me, if I read it and it strikes me, people, I'll do it. I don't like care. People I want to work with. So who are you desperate to work with? So. Who's still on the list? I'd love to work with Michael. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks, man. Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, it's more about the people that, sure. that you get a chance to be with and, and learn is, from. I think you're right. You see, I think this is about the community. And especially our show. It's an ensemble show. And the more ensemble it is, the more satisfying it is. You know, I, I love mm. that aspect of it. It's a team sport. It's the ultimate team sport. Yeah. We rise together. Yeah. yeah. On that note, thank you all for being here. Nice hanging with you guys. Yeah, nice thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh,